So what's really important to recognize here is that we're all training up in this recognition of open intelligence as the basis of our experience. This is a training which means that the first place to start is with the introduction to open intelligence. We need to have that introduction before we can begin to then train up in the recognition and reliance on open intelligence. So the introduction is really simple. The introduction is as simple as just to stop thinking for a moment. Just to pause your train of thought for an instant and to notice what's there. There's this alertness. There's something that's open and ready for the next thought to appear. There's this intelligence that is the ability to know, the capacity to experience. And when we stop thinking for a moment, we allow ourselves just to notice that, that that's there. We identify this quality within ourselves. Now this instruction to stop thinking is just an instruction that is given at the beginning so that we can identify this open intelligence in our own experience. Now what's crucial to see, and what you enable yourself to see in every short moment of just relaxing, is that this open intelligence is naturally present regardless of whether we're thinking or we're not thinking. It's the basis of all descriptions. Now we've simply been focused on all of the descriptions and emphasizing and analyzing and talking about the descriptions to such a degree that we haven't noticed that all of them rest equally in the same basic space of knowing, the same open intelligence. Now an analogy that I found very useful was that of a mirror. So a mirror just reflects everything equally, impartially. A mirror reflect, reflects pleasant images as equally as it reflects unpleasant images. The mirror itself is completely unaffected by whatever reflections appear within it. Now this can be likened to our own open intelligence, this sky-like clarity, this limitless expanse of mind. This limitless expanse of mind is like an infinite mirror, just reflecting everything equally. The mirror itself does not worry or is not concerned about what happens to be reflected in it, what appearance happens to spontaneously shine forth. The mirror is completely pristine and clear no matter what description arises. Now if we want to understand the fundamental nature of a mirror and we decide that to understand the fundamental nature of a mirror <coughs> what we need to do is to focus on the reflections in the mirror and we need to get really close up to those reflections and we need to try and have certain kinds of reflections and that somehow will help us understand the nature of the mirror. So perhaps if I try and use all of my strength and energy to make sure that I only have pleasant reflections in the mirror that will help me understand the nature of my experience, the nature of reality, the nature of the mirror. And so I focus on all of these descriptions and I think that somehow that if I have a certain kind of description, that will help me understand the nature of this mind, this vast limitless expanse. And the more I focus on the descriptions, that's, the, that's all I see. It's almost like getting closer and closer to this mirror. We're narrowing our perspective into this very limited set of definitions about what our identity is. And we think that by exploring different descriptions or different reflections that somehow this is going to give us a, a, broader, a broader perspective on what's going on. So I know for myself I spent a lot of time trying to have various experiences that I thought would give me an understanding of what was going on. Trying to bring about certain states like bliss or happiness or stillness or oneness. And putting a lot of time and energy into trying to bring about these states. Convinced that these were the descriptions that were somehow more the mirror than the other descriptions. Now when you relax for a short moment, you recognize in your own experience instinctively and directly 
that all of these descriptions shine forth equally from this vast expanse of open intelligence. Open intelligence is the fuel of all of these descriptions, of all of these experiences equally. Now this is the first and fundamental recognition because it cuts at the root all of the assumptions we've made about what's going on in the world. It cuts to the root about all of the conventional descriptions that we've used to try and understand our experience and what's going on in the world. We see that all of these descriptions shine forth equally as this dynamic energy of open intelligence. This is the greatest category and most comprehensive way we have of understanding our experience. It includes but subsumes all of these descriptions that we've used to describe what's going on. All of the descriptions such as internal and external, subjective and objective, good and bad. So we're not discarding any of these, but what we're doing is taking up the correct perspective on all of them, recognizing them as all shining forth equally from open intelligence. Now very practically what this means is that we've tried to live our lives, we've tried to take our actions, we've tried to make our decisions based on all of these conventional descriptions. And I can see in my own life that when I went about life like this, basing my actions, basing my decisions on all of these descriptions, trying to work out what was the right thing to do, what was the wrong thing to do, how I could be a good person, how I could take effective action to try and solve the problems of the world, and feeling very, very deeply the, the pain and suffering that was going on in the world. The first thing that I saw was actually how much of a mess I was creating in my own life, no matter how well-intentioned I was. To see that all of my actions seemed to be really ineffectual in terms of bringing about this peace and stability and open-hearted relating that I wanted in my own life. Desperately trying to work out what I needed to change to bring about this open-heartedness, to bring about this ease and this sense of completion thinking that I had to have one more incredible experience, thinking that I had to have one more incredible love affair, thinking that I had to have one more book that was going to give me this key that was going to be the uh, answer to everything. And this is like looking for, look, looking to, to, to slake your thirst in a mirage in something that is fleeting, like a rainbow appearing in the sky, trying to hold on to it and pin it into place. And then feeling disappointed and desperate the more I try to look for my answer in the, in the reflections in the mirror. Instead, the opportunity here is just to relax and to recognize that this open intelligence is the source of all of these descriptions. And then first of all, I begin to see that none of them can be held on to. They're fleeting appearances, like this rainbow in the sky. But more than that, in a really practical way, from this vantage, from this perspective, I'm able to evaluate all of the data, all of the information, all of the experience from this broadest of all possible perspectives that transcends all of these conventional descriptions but is able to use all of this knowledge and information in a way that from the perspective of only looking at the descriptions is impossible. An analogy here would be that from the vantage of being in the bottom of a valley where all we see is these high walls of descriptions all around us, it's impossible to see clearly. It's impossible to take action that is really effective either in our own personal lives or within the context of what's going on globally in our environment or in our societies. It's these knee-jerk reactions of just responding to the particular sensation or thought or emotion of the moment without having this context for all of them. Now when we have this context of open intelligence or this context of clarity, clear thinking, on all of the data, descriptions or points of view, then we're able to take incredibly skillful action.
because this is so far from being a passive state. To say that we're relying on open intelligence and then to allow ourselves to be a victim of all of this data is just a complete misperception. To use open intelligence as an excuse to continue indulging in all of these habitual ways of going about things is simply a, a poor excuse. But it's a very common misperception and this is why the guidance of a support network is essential. Because it's very easy to drift off into these extreme behaviours and to use the idea of open intelligence as an excuse for certain behaviours. Well it's all one so it doesn't really matter what I do. I can behave how I like, I can say what I like, I can do what I like. This is to take up an extreme and to try and make open intelligence into an idea. And so again, if you're not sure about your behaviour fully expressing this completely beneficial intent, then check in with a trainer, write an email, clarify this situation, and to see that you're not a victim of this data. But what's also important is to be gentle with ourselves here. We're training up in this. This is brand new for most of us. Even if we've had glimpses of this before, the integration of this into all aspects of our everyday life is something new. This is the training up and this is why it's so important to continue training it up even when it's difficult. And if we do fall back and find ourselves indulging in habitual ways of behaving, then there is our invitation when we remember to see that we can take responsibility whenever we do remember and to be gentle with ourselves, to see that this potter's wheel of continual indulgence, avoidance or replacement of what's going on and thinking that that's where we'll find our well-being, when we take our foot off that potter's wheel, that wheel has momentum because we've been pedalling away for decades and we take our foot off and that wheel slowly begins to slow down. But for most people it's not immediate, it takes some time. And so this is the training up, taking our time to see what it's like to take our foot off that potter's wheel, each short moment relaxing. What happens when we let that need to describe just be as it is and we relax and rely on open intelligence instead? We test it out short moment by short moment. And if we fall back into emphasising data and into habitual ways of relating and we feel that guilt and that shame, then there's our opportunity to relax with that. There's our opportunity to clarify all of that data too. Because all of that is also data just shining forth from open intelligence. Everything becomes a beneficial opportunity to clarify the nature of our own experience. It must be kept in your own experience because we can spin off into worlds of descriptions about what's going on, about how it is for other people. All of these complicated descriptions, all of this data that's just spontaneously appearing, keep it in your own experience because that's actually all you have. Anything else is just spinning off into a fantasy world. But what's so powerful is when you begin to see this beneficial quality expressed in your everyday life. Because that is where you have the opportunity to really make a difference. This is getting real with ourselves. This is not living in some fantasy world about where our powers and our capacities for change lie. This is actually taking responsibility for making these changes in our own everyday life and seeing how these changes and this attitude and this approach naturally spreads out like a, like a ripple in a pond spreading effortlessly out to everybody we come into contact with. So be gentle with yourselves but be committed. It, it, it's not always comfortable but you're supported every step of the way here. So simply by showing up, simply by repeating the short moments, participating in trainings, being in contact with a trainer, when things become challenging, it's guaranteed that this bright light of knowing, this ability to be of incredible benefit will only continue to increase. So thank you all so much for your, your, your courage in, in stepping up and speaking up, tapping into this intelligence and tapping into this power that you have to make a difference in your life and the world.